Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last series of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Guangdong Lover, but uh, if you'd like to reread about series of the future, please go ahead, but exemplar. <clears throat> it was a beautiful sunny day on campus, perfect for a graduation ceremony. I stood at the periphery of the crowd, surveying the graduating students, one day to be among them. Cameras lined up every corner of the courtyard, silently heeding the words, being delivered by none, uh, none other than Ibuka Masaru himself. Standing on a raised stage in front of the audience, Ipuka spoke about the hope he had for the graduates. The youth of Guangdong, he said, hold on to so much promise for the future of this country. And I'm pleased to say this current batch of graduates is finally one-third Chinese. A sign of the times. There were mixed reactions to this, but no one dared to utter a word whilst Ipuka spoke. In fact, Ipuka continued, I'd like to point out a single student in particular who exemplifies everything I'd hoped for the future of Guangdong. He's not one of the graduates today, and that makes his achievements all the more noteworthy. His name is Li Hei. A booker turned and looked directly at Hay. Every head and camera swiveled to the face young man. The entire country was watching him. Hay almost winced when Ibuka stepped off the stage and strode towards him. You've got to be kidding me now in front of everyone? He felt his burrowing into the ground of the spot. He felt like burrowing, burrowing down. But then Ibuka offered his hand and Hay took it without a second thought. Again, you're an example to all your fellow students and to the citizenry of Guangdong, Ibuka said, smiling. I, for one, will be watching your career with the keenest interest. As soon as the plaza erupted around Hay, all he did was smile and nod whatever reservations and fears he had once had were gone from his mind. No reason to shy away from the spotlight when he's earned it for himself with his own two hands. No, he was honored, as he should be. If he was struck by lighting at that instant, he'd die a happy man. And it is all thanks to the man standing before him, the scene at Port Shorty. The bulldozers looked like big men of bears, growling as they descended on the riverside neighborhood at Port Shorty. There must have been hundreds of them, extending along the shore in a single unbroken line. Thousands of people, most of them Chinese, stood helplessly behind the row of bulldozers. Screaming for the homes they were about to lose. The police had long given up since trying to get the people out of the sector. Anyone left inside was on their own. The neighborhood's neon signs flickered and died as dawn broke over Port Shorey. One of the, once a construction crews confirmed that all power in the area was terminated. The bulldozers advanced, flattening everything in their path. The neighborhood had been rich, but so for, but for so many Chinese, it had been the only home they'd ever known. Houses, couples had been... Uh, Houses couples had made love in. Children had been born and parents had died and were reduced to rubble over the course of the day, the din of the machinery drowning out the chorus of human despair. This was all being done so that the sector could be remodeled as a new kind of transport hub. All along the Three Pearls, similar scenes played out in a similar manner. The flood of homeless people would be great, but it was all for the betterment of the country. Building in the future has a cost, of course. <sighs> Very good. We've got some comments to go through as well. And you can see I just reloaded the game safe. And we, today, instead of a T, I have oh, triads. Hmm... It is December, so we do need to crack down on them. More corruption, huh? Proclamation of the People's Republic of Bulgaria. Oh. Well, okay. Uh, we close out of this one, too. How much? You know what? We got a little room for uh, corruption, so I don't mind. Decrease this try control. That helped out a tiny bit, but not by a bunch. So, uh, But what the comment says... Uh, uh, we should probably expand the police all over Guangdong and destroy the triads, which we're going to do. And also, we're going to, as uh, I said, ask you guys yesterday, whether we should do our own intellectual base versus a new Gu life in Guangdong. And at the time of this recording, there is more support for our own intellectual base. So, uh, the master's praise, though. It was a relatively calm night in the Three Pearls. And the after effects of the chief executive's uh, recent commencement speech were still being felt in the council's households. Lee Hayes, not one least amongst them. <clears throat> hey sat in their bedroom, his bedroom in Koshu, quiet but giddy. College life was exhausting. All those courses were a challenge and no mistake. Uh, make no mistake. Mechanics, with all those obnoxious equations, were an irritation and a no mistake. Thermodynamics, or thermo gosh darn it, well, even as a professor and his teacher assistants called it, was a darned nuisance, and the less said about calculus, the better. Yet with the challenges and exhaustion, it was so exhilarating. Learning for excellence, uh, as Hay had learned to do in school, had been per told personally by Chief Executive Ibuka, was rewarding in a way that be be beggared its belief, or beggared belief, and being praised by Ibuka himself had been an experience and a half. Never mind, Hay's reservations about the man. His personal praise and the media accolades that have followed have been so worth it. Surely, Hay hoped, there'd be many more such opportunities. Surely, Hay thought. Why, too, would be able to soon take a part on the own stage? While Hay carried on with his reverie, Chun came home from one of Ibuka's many industrial tenements. Glancing briefly at Hay, he had said nothing and went about his business. Progress in some areas declined in others, our intellectu own intellectual base. Though their heritage is, in Ch is Chinese, the Zushin have proven themselves loyal to Guangdong as any devoted Japanese resident. They are dedicated, intelligent, Industrious people who have succeeded where others have failed, and they have further potential that has not even fully exploited. Thankfully, this, they may that may be unlucky or unlucked with a surge of education funding to make sure that the brightest minds among their youth may stay bright throughout the adulthood. There are Japanese refugees and recent arrivals who may bellyache at this and may say that we are turning our backs upon our own people. But if they think they are better than the Zujin, prove it. Just prove it. That's all we ask. Oh, we can do 
this one or we can do this one. Ooh, let's give us both. Actually, that's pretty good. For both, decreases corruption by 7.5, which is good for us. Uh, I don't mind doing that one, yeah. We'll do that one first. Why not? Economic check. Are we above zoning the river pearl? 42 billion? Well, we're a little above that. It was the book uh, chief pride to, to look over the renovated metropolis. Crafted from such humble beginnings, and molded from a single man's dream, dreams had developed into the city that lay before his eyes. Koshi was a colossus, a modern colossus built of steel, glass, and concrete. Literacy was soaring under his masterful leadership, and life inside of cities was proving ever more bountiful for its citizens. Fujitsu had cleared the way, and now the three pearls had settled in its wake. To all incompetent lackeys, it was a symbol of Ibuka's complete victory. To all the inefficient stooges, it was a symbol of their utter defeat. One man stood in the chief executive, and even his ultimate triumph, there was work, to, of course, to be done. Progress is everything, and Ibuka would not be trounced by anyone. Ibuka turned, disregarding the undoubtedly beautiful cityscape for the artificial cityscape of the multitude of maps laid out across his office desk. Written in bold words with the names of every city that meant something in Guangdong, Koshu, Hong Kong, Macau, and even half a dozen others. They bore multitudes of artificial color-coded districts separated by thick black lines. The lines soared through streets, co building complexes and suburbs alike, ripping apart the landscape into a clear cut bordered zones designed for maximum efficiency and ever-increasing economic and technological growth. It would be hard sales pitch. Implementing his vision would only be achieved through hard work and backworking labor, not to mention the extreme sacrifices that would undoubtedly have to be made by the citizens of Guangdong cities. Perhaps sacrifice is too painful to make, but was he too far gone back to go back? A sly, wicked grin plastered itself on Ibuka's face as he studied the rainbow-colored collection of maps. No, he had not yet gone far enough. All the steps forward and not a single one back. Zoning ordinance. One only need to look at the human body to see that things work best when they're grouped together. Would the body be more efficient if one lung is inside the torso and the other inside the left fo foot? Or if one eyeball is located under the armpit? Or thumbs grew out of the forehead? Of course not. Oh, it's present heart, huh? This ordinance shall write such an error in the body politic. People shall live near those of the same profession, and like is with like. All people within it shall work together with a greater efficiency. No more conflicts of professional interests or spread of counterproductive ideals between fields. Just pure unadulterated focus. It may seem radical, but innovation is always a preferable alternative to stagnation. If you wonder about uh, 1952, part 3, please go right ahead. We could use more stability ourselves, actually. There you go. Better. Neon blue band-aids. <coughs> and taking more than a week to buy out the leases for the buildings, and it had been taking more than half an hour to remove the inhabitants. If Ibuka had pushed to modernize Guangdong cities, he was about to force them to evolve. The streets of Macau had been filled with rubble, the company by the roaring mass of construction equipment, and the business districts of Koshu. Much was the same, brick, mortar, wood, and stone alike filled of pieces underneath rollers, wrecking balls, and heavy-handed sledgehammers. Hong Kong shared many of the woes. It bore the same scars as his two sisters, smashed up street stores, flattened apartment blocks along with the neon blue and Fujitsu posters plastered on every street wall and that remained of the city, a pathetic band-aid for a massive wound. <clears throat> Then he said the report with a sickening feeling in his stomach. We were to try to connect the dots in his head. All the legislative council had become used to the amount of social violations if Buka tended to cause in a search for progress, but some grim feeling still remained inside Morita's stomach. Whole districts. <clears throat> Of the three pearls had already become populated, all of them poor. Chinese districts that didn't have the education to apply for the high paying jobs that Ibuka appreciated, and already there was talk that Ibuka was planning even more to start evicting inefficient Zujin citizens. Murita's eyes kept glancing back at the report as if witnessing a wreck of a crashed car. The more he flipped through it, the more expansive Ibuka's vi vi violation seemed. By the end of the document, Murita didn't have the will to throw the document aside, and instead buried his head in his hands. An ugly wound. Let's get more base. It'll get increased here too, but yeah. Uh, we're at 50, which is kind of tight. It's looking very tight. Growth is not great. Deficit is pretty bad. Uh, but what are we going to do? We're still at 40, ooh, 47%. That is not ideal. I have, to have a monster instead of coffee or uh, tea here right now. 100% approval, though. It's not bad. Miscellaneous cost of 1 billion. Ooh, boy. Oh, boy. Power. Well, can't do very much there. Initiative. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, there's no way I'll meet any of those requirements. Take this, Hayashi. They're giving out of the office while you're on patrol. There's got to be something in there tailored for you. Barely walking into the headquarters from set patrol, Officer Lamb snatched the blue neon blue cover pamphlet from his colleague's hand, throwing his jacket over his seat and laying his phone police cap on the office table. With a strange lack of reports of file, Hayashi threw his legs over the corner of the table and flipped through the papers. Buried amongst the endless beautified images of hand-picked ethnic Zushin students reading from modern textbooks, seated in endless university theater rooms, were some scraps of information about what the pamphlet was actually designed for. Most of them talked of tertiary education programs, previously only available for Japanese and nationals, regarding engineering, research and development, and even now and then, a financial or law degree. It was certainly affordable for Hayashi. 
Uh, most of the programs have been marked down depending if you could prove a Zushin background, but something about the whole pamphlet irked him. Surprising amount of time in the past year, or in the past, saw younger Hayashi dealing with that, the aftermath of the Yasuda crisis, and more recently a massive increase in shifts demanded of him by the boss. Every day he returned home tired, sleepy and red-eyed. There wasn't a snowball's chance in heck he could maintain a regular study routine even for the easiest course described in the pamphlet. With a glump feeling in his stomach, Hayashi threw aside the paper and dove into a three-page report. All pain and no gain. With 51 voters, so we do this. Gives him infrastructure, spend more money. Oh, uh, better security, decreases everyone's support. Oh my god. Proposal of the Guangdong Zoning Ordinance. Ooh, economic review. Get back to work. Nice. I get 5% more uh, approval from Japan, huh? My proposal is simply book his voice boomed through the ivory walls. The administrative districts of each of the three proles are to be streamlined, redrawn by occupation alone, not by wealth or ethnicity. Greater productivity, easier coordination, and access. I believe the merits speak for themselves. The crux of this project, however, won't be the eventual reorganization of every citizen of the city of Guangdong. He blinked. It'll be the abolition of the notion that some of us are, for whatever arbitrary reason, superior to others. We share this sliver of land by the South China Sea. It's time we properly share the place and identity, too, as his labors and pioneers, wherever we may hail from. Now, their settlement will be fraught with hardships, but it's a path I'm willing to walk. Sacrifices will have to be made, but their sacrifices I'm willing to see through, with the assistance of Guangdong security forces, if need be. Our privileged brethren from the home islands, of course, can kick up however big fuss they like, as long as they too can be persuaded to move. The heck, I thought the rest of us would not be affected by your plans. Then it flooded back. The intermittent yells of what about our families. Uh, the sea of incense and petrified faces bobbing up and down below the podium. All these limp wristed, chicken crap imbeciles leeching off the backs of... For a second, Ibuka felt something invisible clamp down in his mouth. Then it was gone. False. You were just as susceptible as everyone else. The entire room exploded in fury. Nearly half of all the council were on the member members were on their feet, either shouting obscenities at Ibuka or walking out of the room. Mido was too stunned with shock to even take his eyes off Ibuka. The chief executive, meanwhile, looked onwards at the cacophony and put the space in front of his pupils freeze over again. Uh, that's, that's pretty close. That's extremely close. That's not good. It's, not, it's pretty darn close. These are all very close. God dang it. Uh, wait, this one. Really solidify our control here. Like someone said, I have a feeling we're going to... Ooh, corruption is gone for now. Um, we're going to definitely need to uh, burn some approval real quick. I don't mind getting more political power. Uh, 3%. Uh, we'll do that one. I'm going to wait. We might lose a couple of seats here because we have so many seats already. But getting extra political power is very nice too. But then we're going to do an unfortunate enemy. We're not so arrogant as to believe the vice can be exterminated. So long as we can endure that our workers remain productive and our factories and laboratories are efficiently operated, we understand that people must fulfill their baser desires. Stanley Ho, however, mixes vice with disorder, and we cannot that we cannot abide. His frivolous insistence on subsuming peak efficiency for frivolous pleasures provided by the triads and his partnerships with the weak need Morita Kao and Li Kishin fosters complacency and abets incompetence. The future we seek to build for Guangdong can ill afford either, and thus we must have Stanley removed from the equation. Top. Yoshiko is ex ex expected to suffer through a few questions about the zoning ordinance when she arrived at the party. Located on a majestic yacht, sitting off the coast of Kowloon, she knew the wealthy Japanese expats here weren't enthusiastic about Ibuka's new policy term, but she hadn't expected to be cornered immediately by four or five women. This project would destroy the beautiful old cityscapes, one woman complained. Not to mention to evict us from our traditional neighborhoods. I thought our goal here was to promote Asian culture. We don't need our cities to look like American cube complexes. It's a important step towards, towards, forward for our country, Yoshiko argued. Tech is the future. Guangdong will spirit a new era of Asian centered innovation. Yes, we'll lose some of our cultural heritage, but it'll make up for it in a thousand fold. You sound just like Ibuka, another woman scoffed. Tech this and tech that. What happened to you? You're Baron's daughter, but you're letting this upstart walk all over us and destroy the lives we built here? You're practically his mouthpiece now. Yoshiko's lip curled as she turned away for a moment, but she couldn't escape the accusing glares. The women who had approached her clearly weren't the only ones in this boat who felt strongly about Ibuka's leadership. As she turned back to the women, a new resolution formed inside her and said, I'm better than this. I hear you. Important Japanese experts will be spared from the re rezoning. Uh, Japanese. Uh, no. Everyone's eligible for it. We're gonna need to destroy the triads. That's this one. We got 5% more support. Nice. With that in mind, we're still 51. 52, 7, 2. Not bad. Hopefully we can pass this without any concessions, that'd be nice, especially since we got to start saving up our political power for uh, next year's, or this year's, uh, stuff. You know, product, uh, product cycle. Middle. It could have been the 1963 game. Here Lamb stood with his megaphone and truncheon, bellowing mindless slogans at a jeering crowd of rioters. These measures are for your own safety, he said, keeping his voice as neutral, at a neutral monotone. Please step back from the court and trespassers are over, over the cordons will be arrested and prosecuted. Or they would be once the zoning ordinance had actually passed. This was nothing but a terrifying demonstration of government power, roping off the three pearls so that the chief executive can oppose his will on the masses. Under the ruins of St. Paul's, Lamb spoke into his megaphone, lied willingly, and stared at the crowd. You couldn't even tell. 
That was the most depressing part. He couldn't. Uh, even tell who was Zhujin and who was Chinese. Maybe the Zhujin wore cheap suits while the Chinese wore racks, but was that really a difference? The distinction had disappeared under the tidal wave of fear and anger. He feared the almighty Japan, fear the chief executive, and fear of him. Then forced the corporate overlords. Who was he? Lam Kiao Sun, anyways. Was he the, his badge, the male the fist of Guangdong's elite? Was he Zhujin, the meaningless term of Japan's invention, used only to try to carve Guangdong away from his Chinese homeland? Does it even matter? Might as well let it go for once. Uh, Zujin exemptions. Zujin are given the choice of residence instead of having to abide by forced rezoning. We could try that. So we do that. Um, due to the amendment, Zujin's exemptions increases government Zujin support. So basically, you don't lose Zujin support. Are we playing favorites? Oh, you bet we are. Purge corrupt officials. Yeah, I like to do that one, but with no corruption. Well, almost no corruption. Uh, we could do this one too. Uh. We'll try it. We may need more papers in the future. You never know. Bottom. Wai was shouting again. Leong groaned, got up from his chair, and walked out in the apartment's main room, where Wai was working herself into a frenzy. And then Chun and Chen, his parents have just been told they're being kicked out, she exclaimed. They're rezoning his neighborhood into some kind of science district. I can't get away with this. There'll be a protest this weekend on campus, and I'll be there. I don't care how dangerous it might be. Mai was sobbing quietly in the corner, so it fell to Leong to formulate a response. I'm glad he said softly. I'm glad you're sticking up for your fellow students. For people like us, it doesn't matter, though. Fujitsu is Chun locked away somewhere and he barely ever comes home. Hey is always on the move. Mai and I are workers in the same factory, so we'll always have each other, but the fact is that the companies broke up our family long before the zoning ordinance. All I want, Makaren, taking great gasping breaths in between sobs, is to be able to love Chun and Hei both, but they're never here. Things just had to make it had to make it hard. As Leong moved over to console May or Mai. Why stood speechless for a moment? Eventually she gathered her thoughts and told her parents, Yeah, I guess we're all I guess we've done all we can. There must be a way out of here. There has to be. Chinese exemption. Spares the most productive Chinese communities from having to uh, Follow resuming regulations. We're at 52. So with this one, it decreases security, oppressive police. Highly increases, decreases. So we should get a slight increase in uh, police. Increases China's opinion by 2%, but really we're going to lose it by 1.5, which kind of sucks. But uh, yeah, we're just pissing off the Japanese expats at this point. Hey, we're 52 seats. That's not bad. Yeah. Six days left. Crime, where it doesn't belong. An uptick. 10% uh, and robberies. Oh, I've read this one before. You're going to need this, please, go ahead. Ooh. Have your fun. Okay, that's okay. Complaints and assistance. Ooh, I think I read this one before. Please go ahead, you want to need this again? Ooh. There he yeah, is. Okay, for now. Where are we at? 52%. Hey, that's not bad. That's not bad. Doesn't get any more Chinese monthly support, but we're not losing anymore. We get more growth, and more growth from the police. The pass, the ordinance passes. We don't use corruption at all. The room was quiet. Many held their breath as the votes were being counted. The Ibuko was so close to getting his answer. Would the zoning ordinance bill pass, or will Ibuko's mad scheme be flushed away with haste? The legislative council looked around, hoping to tell whether his peers voted yes or no. Oh, we're sure the vote would be the winning one. All were tense, waiting for the announcement. The teller declared a sword and began to speak. In the case of the zoning ordinance bill, introduced to the legislative council by Chief Executive Ibuko Masaru, the bill has passed. Immediately, the council broke into chaos. Council members began screaming at each other, each accusing the other for voting in favor of the bill. Many collapsed on the floor, singing into oblivion or demanding a telephone to speak with the families. The only members cheering for the bill's passage were their representatives at Fujitsu, as well as the majority of the Hitachi Corporation. Marita was one of the many who had fallen into a catatonic state. He had lost. His fight for a more humane Guangdong was as good as over. How is he to make Guangdong a better place if he could not even block one bill he should have blocked? He saw Li Keqing sink into his face into his palm. What, saw whatever Sony and Chung Kong representat representatives turn into squalling children. He was done. And so he booked Masaru. <clears throat> Chief Executive of the city of Guangdong looked upon the greatest of among greatest of his works. The vibrant, swelling, all-consuming fury unfolding before his eyes. He pondered and felt the corner of his lips curl up. And it was not a scoff, not a, bit, uh, not a bitter smirk, but a smile. And he was happy. Beautiful. So we lose no Chinese Zhujin support. We lose expat support. We're, it's already maxed out, so. We're just screwing over the Japanese expats, that's all. So this one last one. If you want to do about on the streets again, please go ahead. Um, we have 60 seats, which is pretty good. The challengers. Oh, crap. Hey, this is over after this one. Get more corruption. God dang it. We lose four seats. God friggin' dang it. A moment's peace. If you excuse me, Chief Executive, I'll bring some tea before we discuss the next point of business. 
please. Uh, Song stepped out without, without another word, leaving Yvokamasu alone in his office. It wasn't long before his eyes began wandering, but lightly tapping against the wooden floor, loosely his gaze fell upon the bookshelf to the left, filled with academic tomes, and the window behind the Consul General's desk. On the bookshelf to his right, filled with binders marked by neat, neat lettering, then finally settling on the desk before him. Papers, folders, pictures, and framed. One cut his eyes in particular, a group of men in fatigue, smiling before some, bi some village or another. The Consul General's face was unmistakable. He'd seen the picture before. It was facing him after all, and it wasn't the only one like that. A number of pictures from the man's soldiering days had been found, ho uh, found home on shelves and windowsills. He'd never been brazen enough to ask about it, of course. There were a few Chinese men with many fond memories of the 40s. And the two were nowhere near close enough to touch that raw of a nerve, so he couldn't have fought for the Nationalists, and surely not the Commies. A soldier of Wing Jingwei, yes, that must be it. How else could a Chinese man fight in the forties remain on the good graces of Nanjing? He moves over what the calm, contemplative diplomat would be like in war. He didn't seem like the type to fight, and was, as with everything Guangdong. A book of Master concluded there was more to Zhang Ziguang than what met the eye. The creak of the door and measured footsteps snapped him out of his daze. Yeah, maybe able to learn more. Well, you not may be able to. We will learn more. Um That's gonna be a giant step to try to destroy. Twenty one, this is so high, it's ridiculous. Increases Yakuza, increases ours. Eh, which one had uh, Chinese support? No. Is it this one? Japanese support? Increases Kenpai by Thai. Increases Japan's approval. I don't want to increase any more. I'll just stick with this stuff for now. He went to Pagrafi. Shen and his wife were eating cereal when the Kenpai Thai burst into their apartment. Working as an accountant for Zhujian firm of little importance, Shen was confused by this. He was just an insignificant accountant. Why was he being dragged away? He got his answer when the officer escorted him out of the building and into the street. Everyone was either running out of the building or being escorted into the street. People were crying, hugging their loved ones, some even running away from the bat baton armed Kenpata agents. She noticed new the new notice on the board written in Chinese. Current distinct district. Utility workers own. Excuse me, sir, but where am I going? She asked the officer. You will board the public transport. With vehicles that coordinate with the current occupation will be transported to your housing zone. Shin heard his wife screaming, begging for his mercy. He broke free of the officer's grip and ran to his wife, embracing her. The officer and the two others were quickly dragged the two apart, ready to beat the both of them. Locate and board your respective public transport vehicles now, one of the officers shouted. After a small goodbye to his wife, Shin located and entered the monorail label district 4A accounting zone. When he arrived at his new home, Shin looked around to see his wife but couldn't see her anywhere. He turned to the old man sitting next to him. Where are our family? Shin asked. Not here. What do you mean? Look around, all of us are accountants. Nobody else is here. You see that camera? The man pointed out at a new camera, staring down at them. We're going to make sure the only people here are accountants. There's nothing we can do. Shen looked at the man and saw in his eyes a tired and sad gaze. The man had clearly given up resisting years ago and was ready to be herded wherever he was told. Shen thought about how he'd never see his wife again and realized that the man was right. There's nothing any of them could do. People going down are objects, ready to be sorted. The future waits for no one. Oh, we lose Chinese institution support, anyways, and Chinese support. But poverty gets better. Making more police control, too. God dang it. Ah, our blow back up. No, god dang it. Oh, corruption, 3%. Man. Come on. We're just trying the best we can here. Draft a plan. Well, we'll do that one once we can get through all this stuff. 57%. Uh, 48% is not good. We want to pass whatever we can. We should be able to pass it really quickly in orderly society, huh? What does this one do? Nice. Here for a second. Underworld Ascent. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Bruh. Do whatever it takes to keep the Yakuza down. And the tribes, of course, too, but. <sighs> the yield. Some hundred odd days ago, the colleges. And the state of Guangdong had been opened up to the Chinese citizenry in accordance with Chief Executive Ibuka's plans. And the results were uh, making themselves felt. The emerging group of Chinese intellectuals still struggled to get by, as they always had throughout Chinese history, just as their ancestors often barely scrapped by the Jinxin and the Xinguang examinations for the Imperial Service Service. These new students frequently survived the intellectual and financial difficulties only by the skin of their teeth. Yet the new intellectual class flourished in a way that had not been since the height of the Qing Dynasty, let alone during the rule of the men they called Lei Zhongyang, Song Yak and Ling Muk. Though they still had to work grunt jobs part-time, they were already obtaining unprecedented intellectual enlightenment, just as the book had hoped would happen. But not everything went Ibuka's way. Away from his eyes and those of his loyalists, the new Chinese intelligentsia reconnected with history. Not merely that of Guangdong or Imperial Japan, but other Chinese homeland and the Xinhai Revolution whose hopes had been so brutally crushed. The more they read, the more they learned. The greater their displeasure at their situation was. It was clear to them already. Things had to change for the better the Chinese nation was to stand amongst humanity on its own two feet. Uh, yet those intellectuals were still wide-eyed and idealistic, still thinking relatively positively of the world around them. So they thought, Zheng Sam Dakasu Daksao would sympathize with their wishes. It will not be long before they realize their error. Hey, more 
Chinese support? Hey, we'll take that. More Chinese government support? Hey! We'll take it. Vice grip. Uh, do forgive me if I have the wrong impression, Morita, said Stanley Ho, but I don't think your friends like me very much. It doesn't, he doesn't like me very much either, said Morita. I'm just not sure if that dude regards you to as even human. Just another impediment to progress. And innocent and crimes, don't forget that, asked Lee. You can kick a lot of innocent people down people's doors on the basis of snuffing out crime. Can't walk down the street these days and be trying to zoom without a dozen policemen pulling out their notebooks, and if that's if you're lucky. Even my luck's running out these days, Kashin, and I've always considered myself a gamble man, said Stanley. But there's not that much to bet on when the dealer takes all your chips away before you, the card's even on the table. I won't lie, I've been getting hit hard. We've been getting hit hard. I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. When you hit back somehow, said Marita, it's obvious to all this has nothing really to do with gambling or smuggling or organized crime, not really. It's about us, and through us, any scraps of dignity the Zujin and Chinese have left. Nothing's ever enough for Ibuka, never was in Tokyo, and never will be here. Marita fist banging the table, we have to stop this, we can't let this happen. Okay, oh, I know we can't. We just need to think and plan carefully, or we'll just have to play into his hands, Lee said Lee. I just can't let this happen again. Increase the admin costs. Decrease the Chinese support. Decrease the Chinese... I want to keep that as high as possible for now. Microsecond men. Microsecond men. In order to address a crippling shortage of manpower available to the police, a drive will be made to incentivize all citizens with enough confidence and qualifications to join a militia. All the best will be accepted, for it's only the best. That can bring stability to Guangdong. The orders then receive intensive training and equipment, which will only be matched by the police themselves. But their situation demands quality, and we will provide it. Oh, did we lose this? No, we didn't. How dare you. How dare you. We're still down across Guangdong, which is still good for us. Uh, 56%, not bad. And we're 27%, which is better than it has been. And we're not quite 100% there, so that's so decent. Um, and we're still at 53, so. Could be a lot worse. But happy May, everybody. Happy May. I'm going to get the next upgrades for us. We've got a lot of political power. Uh, let's come along swimmingly. I really want better admin efficiency, but whatever. Just like please, additional equipment. Agriculture is getting worse, which is not good. But there's really not much we can do about it right now. And we have a total of 46 seats, which is not great. Hitachi has a crap ton of seats. My god. Oh, Ibuka. Man of the hour. You know, just in case, it's too even here, so we're just going to do this one. 29 is pretty good. A little bit of corruption, because uh control. No thanks. Ooh, what else do we have here? Dump products in China. Product cycle. Oh, we've got 10 days. Do I want to spend 30 political power? Too late. Already dead. Well, I might as well keep that one open for now. On the streets. New toys. Koju's eyes widened the equipment wall that adorned the police station. What used to be covered in outdated weapons was now ordained with fascinating new firearms, many of them cutting edge. The Macau police force was rather underfunded, so new gear was a cause for celebration. All around the wall, Koju's workers chatted and drank sake, all bristling with excitement. <laughs> Finally, some new toys to play with, exclaimed Akira. Koju hated Akira. He had a history of taking bribes from criminals. One of his favorite pastimes was to arrest workers on the streets and have them pay protection. Koju looked around at the other faces of the police force. He could pick out several faces he knew took bribes from criminals. Still, they didn't scare him as much as the newer recruits. I can't wait to deliver some justice to those Chinese dogs, one of them exclaimed. Many new police officers flocked to Guangdong, rooted or among the Chinese that they were the subservient race. Several of them were particularly fascinated with their newfound access to data about Chinese criminals. Koju heard the police chief walk in the room. Chief Takamishi was Japanese, but he had a kid who was half Sushin. That's enough, Ichiro, he said, a hint of intolerance in his voice. You remember the Macau Police Department. I'll be darned if I'll let you abuse our new equipment. As a matter of fact, I have a message for many of you. This equipment was given to us for the purpose of upholding the law, not extortion or subjugation. If any of you use it for anything else, I'll have you shipped back to Japan with the recommendation of severance or severance without pay. Many of the younger officers looked away in shame and anger while Akira's face gave way to disappointment. Goju, as well as several other officers, saluted their police chief. Goju hoped that the other police departments had chiefs like Takashi, Takamishi instead of Akiro and Ichiro. Macau's in good hand. Decrease the Chinese government support, but increase the police control. Decrease social costs. Nice. Statistics do not lie. Well, but we can make them lie. Data. Extensive and candid guidelines for every single action and decision made by the administration. Numbers and paragraphs that should be interpreted and treated as gospel. Comprehensive instructions which should be followed regardless of the matter. Why should we treat the matter of criminal activity as an exception? The contemptible lawbreakers and delinquents must be attacked with maximum brutalities in the voluminous accumulation of statistics we have gathered on crimes that are entered in Guangdong. The police will be directed to perform increased patrols and searches upon inhabitants of areas or sectors unequivocally, proven to be hotbeds of illicit activity from the detailed rec records of past events. It's likely that certain portions of the population will be dissatisfied with their new efforts of security, however, that is simply not of a concern, for we will not neglect known issues due to the grievances of ignorant fools. The data presents the truth, therefore we can act upon it, and there are no nuances or external variables. 
increases Japanese export support by 1%, increases China support, increases Japan, uh, China support. The Falcom R microcomputer, 4,000 word memory capacity, tabletop size, 40 by 28 by 59 centimeter dimensions. Spend, spend, ooh. We don't have enough command power. Ooh, that's going to be an issue later, probably. Uh, we're going to decrease our own support there. How much support from the Ch Japanese we have? 95%. That's not bad, actually. How much corruption do we have? 7%. Uh, it's negligible for now. I'm going to wait to do this one. We don't. We might not have to do it. Which is important for us. So nothing there we can really do. Oh, happy June, everybody! Wait and see for that. Every two days show uh, target mark as well. I want to increase the Chinese support just in case because it's relatively lowish. And if we do that, we get more um, police support, which is not much. But oh, product profitability maybe not then. Putting goes up. If you want to buy this one, please go ahead. Japanese market, German market. But that's a lot of money. It's a lot of nice money too. Chile. I don't know. I kind of sell it to Chinese, but our profitability goes down. Though, do we really want that one? I'm gonna do it. Let's do it one, one last time for China. Even though we lose, we don't make as much money. Um, I still want more support from them. So, and we're gonna lose support in the future. I promise you, we're gonna lose more support all the time from them. Actually, what are we up for this? Corporate oligopoly. Centralization is 84 out of a possible 100. So, for deconstruction. Okay, cool. Interesting to know. Statistics just don't lie, man. But I do, if I have to. So where are we at? We're at 45 and 45. That's not terrible. There you go. There you go. There you go. Now we're going to get 2.39, which is not terrible. That's pretty decent, honestly. But rapid response. No bulls, arms. I can, his eyes blah, but he had made it, of course. <clears throat> Some of his challenges he had expected, such as... Uh, <clears throat> A lot of fire exercises and environmental hazard courses, but others seem more esoteric. A typical security force will not make his potential recruits go through a course in elementary Shogun uh, programming or electrical engineering after all, so he guess that they needed people who could reliably use and maintain all these fancy new toys. <coughs> the recruitment process was one of savage attrition. A few made it to the final stages. Nobuo noticed that recruits seemed to come in two flavors. Those are typically for more traditional security positions, such as guards, police, firemen, who took well to the physicality of the role, but it fell apart almost immediately when they had to face a computer screen. Then there were the white-collar workers who wanted a job which made them feel tough. They could understand pattern read outs in a second, so it took them a well, little while longer to climb a rope, though. Nobuo considered himself generally in the first camp, and at times felt like he was going to cry reading all the manuals, but he managed to pull through. The pay was decent, and the work was, of course, interesting. Public reactions to them were mixed, but a few complained when they were pulled out of a burning building by them. The Guangdong Special Security Action Detachment, it would appear, was a name well earned, at least he thought so. He really wished someone in his unit could speak Cantonese. What does Pukai mean? Beats me. Beats me, and I'm beating them. No, not there yet. Ah. God dang, we really need more command power. How much do we get every day? 0.41. That's not enough. Nothing here yet. What we really want to do. 1560 is not bad. Just want more Chinese support just in case. The Guangdong <clears throat> Modern Police Ordinance. The police in its current form is a glaring outdated symbol of the obsolescent, obsolete past. Or obsolescent past. The equipment that they would wield and the jurisdiction they possess are adequate and minimal. <clears throat> And an evident contrast to the advancements we've brought upon this nation. We'll do away with the antediluvian tools of enforcement currently in use, replacing them with innovative and modern weapons and state-of-the-art computing equipment designed by our talented employees of Fujitsu. This will fully ensure the state is secure against threats to the mainland order, maintained order, and that our administration of visionaries will continue to thrive. We'll increase the currently limited jurisdiction given to the police force, allowing them to perform their duties with optimized efficiency and avoid the useless mountains of red tape. Ibuka and Fujitsu have brought the future to Guangdong. It's time we bring the police and our nation's safety up to speed. A helping hand. Anything else here? Nope. Lieutenant Tokuda was beginning to grow suspicious. The auxiliary militias had certainly made his job easier. The jails were practically full to bursting with all kinds of scum, of course. And the response times had gone up drastically. There were just a handful of small problems. Oh boy. That's never good. For example, Takuda had no, uh, no clue who the militiamen answered to. Not to him, certainly, and they barely spoke to anyone in the station. 
Half of them we saw. Half the time we saw them, they were already dragging in groups of Chinese before Takuda could even know what the purported crimes were. They looked guilty enough, but all the same, he would prefer for some level of chain of command to be established. He had heard something about liaison officers which served to coordinate the two groups, but Tokuda had yet to see any. Then there was all that fancy equipment they carried around. They had to add in a second army just to fit it all in. Regular GPF officers weren't officially barred from entering, but they just couldn't use any of the equipment without the proper training, something which never seemed to be offered or forthcoming. Despite the falling crime rates and the high arrests, Tokuda can help but think that they're all slowly but surely being replaced. Whatever happened to the human touch? I don't get touched too much. That might be very awkward. The counteract the profitability. We can increase it by five days, but we can wait. We don't have to do it right now immediately. Well, at least we get more uh, police control. We lose ja Chinese support a little bit, though, which is not ideal. Because right now we're at what? 53%, which is not bad. So it goes down 51% ish. You know? I caught red-handed. Officer Tadao Tsushida was in the final stretch of his beat. Half an hour more to be headed home for dinner. Tsushida was exhausted. Eight hours of patrol he had left his feet blustering his temper afraid. A few Chinese turds steal a few Japanese wallets uh, a few blocks from the government complex and the policemen like Tsushida ended up walking torturous patrols in wretched, disgusting Chinese districts like this one. It was utter horse crap. Thankfully the day was almost over. Tsushida was thinking about sitting down to a red snapper sushi with his wife when a cry thief went up from a nearby businessman. The man was Japanese and was pointing to a small boy barreling th through the crowd with a businessman's wallet in hand. Tsushida drew his nightstick and took off after the boy, anger rising within him. Of course something had happened, had happened right before he knocked off for the day. So she cornered the boy at the mouth of an alley, grabbing the kid before he could make good his escape. Come here, you little son of a crapper, the policeman snarled. He brought his nightstick down on the kid's wrist, and there was a snap in the boy's scream. The businessman's wall dropped to the ground, but Tsushida didn't bother with it. His rage was up. Scum, he growled as he beat the kid over his back, his buttocks, his legs. Chinese dog, stealing right at the end of my shift, right when I get home, screw off and die. Tsushida beat the child over and over again until the boy began to scream. He was so invested in tormenting the kid that he didn't notice the crowd closing in around him. The Chinese residents of the district had taken notice of the cop's aggression, and they were deeply perturbed, angry even. Something is about to happen. Sign an amendment to the ordinance. Oh. Well, let's save it for now. Um, we need to continue to increase our support a little bit from them. 80%? That's not bad. Uh, we have 45 days left, which is pretty decent. Uh, let's build up a couple more days. Excessive use of force. Oh, boy. Now the traffic on the street had gone ground to a halt. The crowds around Officer Tadashi too. She did a little pickpocket had grown to immense proportions. Most of the onlookers were Chinese in sense at the achievement of the job, but there were others, Zhujin and Japanese, who were taking notice of the violence and who were, if not outright sympathetic, at least disturbed. A ring formed around the bloody scene. When Sushida wasn't looking, a pair of hands reached through the ring, took hold of the wounded boy, and pulling him back into the crowd. Sushida moved to chase a thief and his rescuer, but it was too late. The ring had closed. Now he was alone, surrounded by Chinese who just witnessed a brutal, vicious beating of one of their own. Sushida became painfully aware that he was backed up against the wall of a building with nowhere to run. What are you looking at? The policeman asked Pat. What are you looking so sorry for? This neighborhood is known to be a crap hole. There's numbers to prove it. A certain hand is needed with you people. You let your neighborhood go to crap, let criminals run rampant, and you expect others, others to clean it up? Parasites, that's what, that's what you are. Fleas on a dog's back. A low murmur passed through the crowd like an electric current. Tsushida caught some whispers. He's alone. He's a monster. We can take him. As if on a prearranged signal, all the Chinese in the crowd took a single step forward. Tsushida's eyes wild, drew his pistol, and waved it angrily at the mob. Stay back, yo. Don't test me. Justice bears his fangs. Oh, boy. Let's see what happens. We're going to build it up. First on the scene. Leon Howell Soon was standing in front of the CCTV monitors at the headquarters when Officer Sushida beat up the young pickpocket. The minute uh, Lam saw a mixed crowd of Chinese, Zushin, and Japanese gathering on the screen, he was at the door and on his motorbike and was on his way to the crime scene with a group of his fellow officers in tow. In the brief time it took him to reach the scene, the crowd had swelled even further. Word had spread of the little boy's abuse at the hands of a Japanese officer, and the Chinese were coming as far as, as ten blocks away to see what had happened. At the rumble of Lamb's motorcycle, many of the officers, uh, Chinese, turned their heads. They recognized him, threw insults at him, called him and other Zhujin race traders, lapdogs of the Japanese, as they had always done. Ordinarily, such words wouldn't hurt, but today, for some reason, they did. Lamb felt angry. He wanted to shout at them, Can't you see I'm here to help you? Can't you see I'm trying to fix things? Nothing justify the savage beating of a child and Japanese involvement. Ja Japanese involvement or no, they haven't been called in to get whatever cluster screwing on was settled right away, and darn it, that's what he'll do. And that's when he saw the jeeps and trucks of the camp by test circle and the crime scene like wolves, and he knew this wasn't going to be a good day. This bodes ill. Oh boy. And, draft a plan. An operation to take down the tribes is no easy feat. It required meticulous planning and painstaking coordination to even put a dent in their activities, much less neutralize Stanley Hill and his associates. We must account for all of our resources within the both government and the newfound Yakuza allies, and determine how much to allocate them for maximum effect. We'll only get one shot of this before Moody uh, and Lee stymie me any further action, so we better, miss, better make it count. Unprofessional conduct. You know that applies down by Susan Row with the one with the nice girls and the one officer? Never in my life, of course. How are they doing anyway? We're talking business, or pleasure, or both, said the other. It's gone. Militia kicked in the door the other day, and they got everybody. 
Heaven's sake, but why have they been given so much authority? All these fancy toys, but they know nothing about the basics of policing. Exactly, just can't go kicking down every door. What about the finer details of policing, investigation, community relations, informants? No, we have computers now. Ridiculous. Oh well, eventually they'll screw up big time and things will go back to how they should be. I sure hope so. Maybe we'll get some of the gadgets then. They do look pretty fun. You don't think they found anything on us, do you? <clears throat> Crisis in the streets. And the span or space of two heartbeats. The scene devolved into utter chaos. The camp by tire launched into action, grabbing random Chinese bystanders and dragging them into their windowless trucks. When the crowd attempted to start these abductions, the camp by trained their guns on the crowd, all the while continuing to seize the people. The Chinese pleaded with the camp by to stop, but their pleas fell on deaf ears. Where are the government officials? Lamb screamed with his in his mind, the effing government complex is literally blocks away. Why is no one here to mediate this? The policeman who'd beat up the pickpocket grinned and nodded approvingly as the Chinese were plucked off the street. You see, he shouted. See, now this is what happens when you don't take care. This is what happens when you let this order creep in. You get what you deserve. Lamb's fellow officers were arguing amongst themselves. No one knew who had jurisdiction here, and no one was willing to cross the Kenpai Tai. Even the crowd was tearing itself apart, with Japanese turning on the Chinese, turning on Zhujin, as unbridled man unleashed itself upon the sea of onlookers. It was all too much. Nobody's listening to anyone anymore. On and on the shouts ruptured. Lamb's ear drums, on, on and on the frustration ate away at him. Until finally something within him boiled over, something primal. Will everyone just uh, shut up? Miraculously, they did. The crowd felt silent still. The officers stopped arguing. Even the Kenpai Tai ceased their abductions and stared at Lamb. Lamb looked at the faces turning toward him. He had their attention. What now, genius? Now what? As we're drafting a plan, of course. As we did leave that earlier. Uh, yep. Pretty much. Yeah, an operation to take down the triads, no easy feat. Required meticulous planning and painstaking coordination to even put it into their activities. Much less neutralize Stanley Hill and his associates. So, all odds on me. Time seemed to stand still as everyone's head whipped around face lamb. Everyone's still glaring, though with somewhat less mirrorless intent. The world span uh, slightly, making lamb feel nauseous. They were listening, and now we had to say something. Screw it, here it goes. It turns towards the police, glowering at the officer who just started all this. Would you kill you to show you some effing professionalism for a change? If you just booked the kid the way you're supposed to, none of this would have happened. But no, you'd nearly to fire into a crowd and start a riot. Over what? Effing pocket change? Great way to maintain order and pe peace, genius. You should be ashamed of yourself. You turn to the crowd, tears forming in his eyes, and you would erase right what you want? What were you hoping to achieve by escalating all this? We can't build any kind of future if we spend every moment tearing each other apart. How much are you willing to risk on behalf of some pickpocket? Go home, all of you, and try to do something more productive with your time. He wasn't sure if he believed these words, but they immediately came. But they came immediately. And so they were what he used. In a lower voice, he said, almost muttering, Go home, for F's sakes. Please just go home. He was unsure if the crowd heard him. Well, the crowd continued to go glower, but they began to back away and disperse. Thank heaven, thought Lamb. As he watched them leave, he noticed he no longer felt anything like sympathy, but just a low, grim satisfaction and relief. The job was done. The situation was resolved. Turning back towards the police, he saw some supportive glances and a lot of scowls. The office is going to be intense tomorrow. An uneasy peace settles in Koshu while China smolders in the background. Things are gonna burn. Burn, 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 burn. Eh, we're still trying to do this here, too. But there's not much we can do with 85% incredible, incredible, uh, oh, and we're maxed out with this, so that's actually really nice. But 25 days left. 15%. You know what? We're going to loan on engineers from Japan. Authoritarian distance. It's been a full day. Things have not yet calmed down, though. Patch accounts of the almost right had already made it to the major papers, but it's also cloud with an air of uncertainty. The race for the defendant of account of the incident had begun, and Takasaki had decided that the Funto Canton Fujin Koran would not be left out of the running. When he had learned that Yoshiko was an eyewitness to the whole event, and even had pictures, his excitement had become palpable. And so Yoshiko had been entrusted with the writing, editing, and pretty much everything. <clears throat> he had given her some rather specific instructions, however. Takas Takasaki had been quite taken with some of the other things Officer Hayashi had said about the future of productivity, and he had asked her to tie this to the chief executive's policies regarding the progress and advancement. Yoshiko had been somewhat skeptical, but in the end, the opportunity was good, too good to pass up. Still... As he said to the typewriter, she had some hang-ups. She realized that although she and Officer Hayashi had spoken and worked together on a handful of occasions, she really didn't know him all that well. Was he, what was he trying to do? All sorts of feelings and motivations could have been cursing through him at that moment, the grasp of which felt unimaginably distant to Yoshiko. What do you think of the pickpocket, of the Kenpai or the GPF as a whole? What kind of Guangdong did he want to live in? For all Yoshiko knew, the version Takasaki uh, wanted could be as accurate as anything else, so she began writing. Truth, speculation, who knows? Hey, more Japanese approval. Okay. And show product release, and we'll release it early to get more product. Only 93.75%, there's no bit sound. It's all over the papers as Speaker trembled along with Ibuka's right hand. His eyeball is still glued to the seat of the khaki clothes. Khaki jeeps, right at the root of this godforsaken building. <clears throat> Uh, the farce has been all over the effing papers for little days now, Colonel, and I want a proper explanation. And I believe we don't owe you any, Chief Executive. The booming voice of M Miyazaki Kiyotaka crashed into his eardrums. You gave us the cameras, and we put them to use. What do we owe? What we do owe you, however, is gratitude. 
for Fujitsu's admittedly impressive gadgets and security networks, which is more than helped with exposing those criminal hidey holes for what they really are. Otherwise, it's the interest of hundreds of our Japanese compatriots at stake. And another race right waiting to happen. Yeah, no, you botched it. Camp Fight had one chance at his response, and you effing botched it. Bang. The book has fists landed on the desk. Are you deaf right now? Right outside of these windows, all people will do anymore is squabble on and on how the Camp Fight has overdone it. And to be honest with you, even I'm starting to see their point. Sai almost a gas erupted with, from his mouth. Would it kill you, Colonel, to at least show some restraint, some subtlety when it comes to handling civilians? To let your officers who show out have problems to fix them. The baritone disinterested voice cut him off. We know full well how we operate, Mr. Chief Executive. I don't see how that's certainly become an issue now. Soft banging the silence? Really? Now? He book his O's always had his issue with the Kenpai Tai. Their savagery ever since the day set foot on Koshu soil. Then again, with another shake of his head, he turned his worn-out gaze back to the, his desktop, and as his folder titled The Guangdong Modern Police Ordinance slid into view, so did the yells and shrieks from outside into his ears. Time is running short. The future cannot wait any longer. Those khaki thugs have stepped out of line long ago. Restrained the Kenpai Tai. Read your direct jurisdiction of the Kenpai Tai to the Guangdong Police Force. Oh, completes the focus. Guangdong Modern Police Force. Or brutality is a tool, but all we have to do is use it. And must empower them. Grant further jurisdiction of the Camp Bai Tai. At 22 seats. Holy crap. Oh, we just auto completed. Holy crap. Quiet breaking room. <clears throat> Eyes everywhere. The situation was a good deal quieter than it used to be, and Sergeant Tsui wasn't sure what to think about it. On the one hand, that a-hole of Furukawa was finally gone, and alongside a whole handful of that idiot cronies. On the other hand, Lao was also gone, making Tsui the only Zujin officer in the precinct. It got on well enough, with a good handful of Japanese officers, but it made him uneasy all the same. Despite the almost wholesale clearing of higher command, Tsui had not received a promotion to lieutenant. Instead, the post had been filled by a handful of terse men Tsui had never seen before. While the situation the station had become quieter, it was not any emptier. Militiamen thronged the corridors and break rooms. They said little to the regular officers, but were constantly watching. Did they not have the cameras and fancy tech to do this sort of thing? Maybe that wasn't the point. Maybe that explained the insistence on wearing the heavy black uniforms and helmets indoors. When they weren't the ones for small talk, the militiamen and Tsui's new superiors were big on lectures and pre presentations. Topics like the extent of the GPF corruption and efficiency, both in their station and Guangdong as a whole, were covered extensively. They were on thin ice, as they were told over and over. A new standard was expected, and no exceptions would be made. A safer Guangdong with or without you. Everyone state, uh, decrease Zhuxin and Japanese expert support, decrease corruption by a little bit, increase police control. Okay. The populace and dense citizenry of Guangdong are deceitful and duplicitous. Their tenements and gathering spots are where dissent and disorder have their genesis. We'll increase our efforts of the surveillance across the streets of the Three Pearls, placing every person under the omnipresent supervision of the state. By implementing, implementing such measures, we'll coerce inhabitants of Guangdong into submission, discouraging them from becoming obstacles of progress and keeping them in line and out of the way. The officers within our vigilant police force will be instructed to increase the intensity and scale of the patrols. To thoroughly and extensively inspect every crevice and alleyway as to ensure all traces of criminal activity be exterminated. The residents of Guangdong would learn to abide by the law, for it will be known that there is no leniency for criminal activity and setting us back. We shall see all. Increase more police control? Nice. More cost, but whatever. It is what it is. Chain of command. Uh, Suchita's face brimmed with indignation. He stood up straight, arms down by the sides with his fist balled. He booked a stare back at him with mild irritation from his chair. Sir, I understand your conviction is in removing from crime from Guangdong and improving the force, and I assure you it's one that I share. However, a question of the GPF is to be operated or commanded with any degree of effectiveness, as important decisions continue to take place above my head. In the past few weeks, the chain of command has been practically upended, and nobody knows where the malicious authority ends and ours begins. Practically half the forest is behind bars now. If you want us to do our jobs effectively, we need some degree of independent command. Ibuka adjusted his glasses and spoke compassionately. Well, you still have your job, don't, do you not? Tushita blinked. What? If you had anything to be concerned with, Commissioner Tsushida, you'd be carrying your things in a box out of your office, or you'd be on the other side of the bars. Are you threatening you? No, not at all. Like I said, you still have your job, but corruption is far too present within the GPF for, its, for it to police itself. Thus, outside assistance has been provided. I assure you, Tsushida, when the wheat has been cut from the chaff, you'll have no further problems regarding your authority. Of course, assuming you're still with us. Calling the cops. You book a dislike dialed in a brain to pick up the receiver. Hello, Tsushida. I take it you've made yourself familiar with the plan of action. Yes, I'm sure. If I wasn't sure, I wouldn't be written, it wouldn't be written down. <coughs> oh, I, I know what they are, but they hate the triads more than us, and you need all the help you can get. Oh, sure, like you were just about to put them all behind bars before I called you. Look, every day they spend helping you was a day they don't spend dumping hookers off of Port Shore and getting my workers addicted to heroin, which is more than the Guangdong Police Force has achieved on its own. Yes, good. Make sure you do. You honestly think I give a rat's butt about your jurisdiction? Or his? You and Miyazaki are welcome to kill each other over it, as long as you and you do uh, away, uh, so do so away from me, and you get the job done. Am I making myself clear? Good. Carry on, Commissioner. You book up with the phone down, and I realize I did this a little bit late. Um, I might go back and actually redo that part, just a little bit. Uh, Six percent is not bad. Forty-nine percent is not great. Ninety-one percent could be better. 
Uh, so just to get some better market stuff here. We're at almost 100% here, which is actually really nice too. Oh, we need more political power. So after eyes everywhere, what do we have going here? Restrain him. So 56 seats. Uh, increases security, oppressive police. Spend more money because we have this. Uh, increases police control in every state by 2.5% because we restrain the Kenpai Tai. Slightly so increased security. Interesting. So we have eyes everywhere though. So that should be passed very soon. And once we're done with this one, we're going to be at the top. Because uh, there's nothing else to pass here, right? Yeah. Uh, corruption is unseeable, but powerful force that consumes the government and bureaucracy of this nation. Everywhere it resides, it invades. It creates chaos and disorder within our institutions, which cripples our mission to bring Guangdong to the forefront of modernity. Complacency equally is powerful is created by corruption and blinds made of the vision Ibuka's for Guangdong. It's all this. Must go. My chief executive Ibuka's were. We'll begin to clamp down on these twin evils as another step in this path, so a good example must be set by Fujitsu. We get low expectations. Introduce a Guangdong anti corruption ordinance. Which we don't have enough seats, but you know what? We'll see. Well, police is the police. Honda pulled off the heavy black uniform, sat back inside. They do know we live in the tropics, right? And I'm sweating buckets in this stupid thing. Well, as long as they sweat more than we do, I guess that's what matters, said Mashida. We'd already shed his uniform and was now sucking down a nice tea between the senses. I guess that wouldn't take much for the fat dudes, though. Uh, still fat or thin, it wouldn't matter much if they get us from behind, said Honda. I've seen how they look at us. People don't like it much when you look, lock up their friends, especially when they're the ones used to doing that. You gotta think it's a good job to watch them then. As long as we do it right, they'll never get behind us, said Mashida. We're, mean to, we're meant to be the best of the best, right? Until our friends in blue get to the standard expected of them, and then we got nothing to fear. Honda side, I guess you're right. Reckon we can stop wearing black in summer when that happens. Hey, decreases child control and decreases corruption. Very nice. As we're at the very the top. Um, yeah. Nice. Twin evils. The Guangdong Modern Police Ordinance passes. Kumail is incandescent with rage. The Camp Batai have been the singular most effective security tool we've had in the region for over 20 years, and yet our chief executives. Little experiment wants to strip their jurisdiction and place it in the hands of a mongrel force with an abysmal track record. Our esteemed colleague has spent most of his tenure extolling confidence and excellence, and yet he will now undermine one of our most reliable organs of state? I like to about the claims made by Mr. Kumai, fired back by Ibuka. The Camp Batai are indeed a fine tool for our specialized purpose. However, and only be ever achieve optimal performance as long as it stays within a specialized niche. As it stands, muddled layers of jurisdiction between our police force and camp by time impedes administration and performance of both services. In order to create a modern security apparatus, we cannot afford to only improve our technology, we must put it to proper use. I agree with the Honorable Chief Executive Pipe to Matsushita. Any effort towards uh, building a modern police force, just as in running a modern business, must place heavy emphasis on administrative reform. Having a high quality end product is all well and good, but not if we cannot deliver to the right place in one piece in an acceptable amount of time. Hope this ordinance will serve to improve the effectiveness of the GPF and Kenpo Tai both. The debate went on for a while, all sides repeating previous points using different words. And the hour, Hitachi's representatives failed to prevent the ordinance's passing. Curiously, Marita had said very little through the debate, even though, as most of the Sony's representatives, voted in favor or abstained. Odd, he book a thought, for such a champion of the common people. One day, Kale, you'll probably be the death of you. And we'll get even more police control in every state. And awesome. Now we have a cup of uh, green tea here now. We've been drinking a lot of different things here, so overall, it's not bad. 31 is here. 33, that's actually pretty good. Um, in Macau, we have 10, oh, we've over, we bought 10 compared to everything else. Um, 33, which is decent. 33 is okay here. Not great here. And of course, not great here, but whatever. Uh, Chinese really don't like us. <laughs> Zhujin, they, they tolerate us. Call them cops. I heard this one earlier, so if you want to do this again, please go ahead. So, you can put, put down the phone. Uh, did I do this one? Yeah, I did do that one. Separation powers. Oh, there's this one. <clears throat> Ma leaned out of the window, cigarette smoke drifting off in the smog. There's still six of them down there, she said. I thought they were meant to be stepping down. No one came over and gazed down at the street below. This is them stepping down. Looks like regular police now. Still a lot of them, but no camp by time. Well, that's an improvement, I suppose, May said passionately. Have you heard anything about Hong Ho Seng? Still in prison from what I hear. Regular prison now, though. No trial, sign of a trial soon, or even charges. I think they'll get to keep them for another week before they decide whether to press anything. Well, he's still alive, I suppose. I hope his wife can help pay the bills. The door opened and Y returned from school. I'm sorry I'm late. I got held up at checkpoint. Everyone stayed, increased the police control. Zhujin and Chinese dissent against the government will lessen in scale. Yeah, that's pretty good. But we're trying to get at the very top now. Follow the paper. Ooh. The beauty of bureaucracy is in the tiny details. With every anonymous budget request or inventory change likely to be documented in triplicate, uh, this works to our advantage. Oh, curiosity is creativity. Um, for a few are clever enough to mask the paper trail entirely, and when done poorly, the alteration of records can become darning evidence in and of itself. Clearing up government of bureaucracy of the rot that invests it is as simple as follows the mistakes, errors, and omissions in records. Every one of them has a responsible owner, and they will wilt under the light of Fujitsu's superior investigative skills. The Falcom are a microcomputer. Look at that. 100% 
product interest and quality. It has become commonplace for any decent sized office building to have a designated computer room, where massive bank houses the computers necessary to run a modern business or government department. They do have a computer smaller than that, one that can fit on a desk. Seems like science fiction, but Fujitsu is promising just that with the latest product, the Falcom, the Falcom R. Using the latest integrated circuits, which can back hundreds of thousands of circuits into the space older computers set aside for a single vacuum tube, it can fit comfortably on a typical office desk, while having a storage capacity for 4,000 words. They're the first in Fujitsu's ongoing project to make computing more distributed and move it away from the big central hubs. Sure to become a fixture of offices everywhere. Now we get through more seats. It's only 100, 135% product profitability, which we could have done better, but it maxed out China's opinion of us, which is 7.5%, and increases Chinese government support, which is not bad. Honestly, that's what we're kind of shooting for, anyways. But over here, pretty good. But we're going to start working on Chokai. Chokai? Chokai? Uh, so there's 13 ahead of us, of the Yakuza, but we're getting there. Um. Let me close out of this one for now. At this point, it's 1969. Corruption is not too bad either. And then now we're at 57%, which helps us with our monthly Chinese government support, gives more police influence every month, and access to journalism. The moon around Kantan Fujin Koran was one of jubilation, however. It's not to be called the Kantan Fujin Koran for much longer, since it was announced that the scope of their magazine was to expand. Someone suggested the Kantan Fujitsu Koran as a joke, to be met with a stern lecture from management. They're still an independent outlet after all, and would not do well to suggest otherwise. Still, They've been getting a lot closer to Fujitsu personnel as well as other figures of note. A lot of them have been impressed with the magazine's content recently, and especially Yoshiko's, Yoshiko's recent article. Circulation of the most recent issue had increased by a significant margin, and word had it that her article was widely being discussed in all sense, kinds of circles. The reception wasn't uniformly positive, but enough of the right people agreed. Enough to gain the magazine access to a lot of very important people, and enough to learn Yosh earn Yoshiko a generous raise. For a while, she stopped and wondered whether Officer Hayashi would, be think, would think of this at all. It was, after all, his reprinted words which had brought up this all about. Would he approve? In the end, though, Yoshiko decided it likely didn't matter. He was just doing his job, and so was she. Her thoughts clear, and she returned to the office party. Her father would be proud. And United Front. Lam Hao Sun. I've seen a lot of strange guys passing through the station. Likely he... Oh crap, I apologize for this. If you want to about better advancements in power efficiency, please go right ahead. Green tea is not bad. Um, likely they tended to be on the opposite side of the bars. <clears throat> <laughs> but then again, a lot of things have changed since Operation 489 was announced. Extensive extensive list of targets have been drawn up, and Lamb's brain was on the verge of exploding from reading all the reports, the data feeling almost random. Camp Hot Time men paid visits to Koshu's finest and discussed their latest innovations in pulling teeth and waterboarding, new equipment, made its way to the armory, and a throng of technical experts and instructors joined them. Some days, it felt l more like standing on a convention floor than in a police station, and then there were the security contractors from... Japan. They lack a standard uniform, often wearing their suits with the top buttons open, or in wild colors, most of ten fingers, some did not. At the moment, one seemed very interested in Lamb. Officer Hayashi, is it? He asked, smirking. Yeah, that's what it says on my badge. Doesn't sound like a Hayashi, Hayashi to me, said the man. Guessing you're one of the Zujin, I keep hearing about. Seems so. How time flies. I was in the war, you know. We didn't use the name Zujin back then. Back in those days, we had a lot of different names. I think the most popular one was Collaborator. But I were being polite, of course. Hey, okay, look at that. Keep building them roads up. Black powers. Revolution succeeds. Oh, well, good for them, I guess. Um, we need more prisons. Uh, Admin officers are okay. Army bases. Oh, get some schools. Nice. It's almost 1970. And we've been doing this anyway, so we're just going to max it out as fast as we can. Oh. Seven and a half. We're not quite there yet. There could spend a little bit of corruption, too. Uh, we need more command command power. Still only 0 0.41 every day, so not great. Oh. Yeah. Position support still 56%. Could increase corruption though too. At the top though. Decreases Yakuza control. We can do this once, and then do the one for the Zushin support. That's not a bad idea. Follow the paper. Low expectations. Japanese came to Guangdong for many reasons, but they usually had something to do with the glittering skylines of the Three Pearls. Ruji. 
from the comfort of his own office in the Xiaoguan Prefecture Ministry of Agriculture, judged them fools. While well, the suits hunted for every scrap of diminishing real estate left in the major cities, stabbing each other in the backs for the most inconsequential promo promotions, Ruji's furnishings were spacious, his colleagues agreeable, and his life simple. Today, some men from Koshi were due to coming knocking. Then Ruji would do their usual little dance, a relic from the brief period after the war where Tojo and the army wanted to turn Guangdong into somewhere to grow rice and instead of Ichigo veterans. The man would ask for audit financial records and Ruji would show them, and invariably they would be disappointing. After all, production really was going down as people flocked to the cities, who in turn set their filth down the rivers. The city would be lucky to produce a quarter of its own food supply in any given year, and in the face of it all, the handling of such inconsequential funds was of no real concern to anyone. Today, however, the men did not knock. These men were concerned. Ruji tried to get them to see reason, but to no avail. As they dragged him through the oversized ministry building, his screams echoed throughout the hallways to be met with silence. Expect nothing. Well, 79%. Oh. Private own. Do we have a current ordinance? Oh, we do. Oh, crap. That's true. So we do this increase our seats by one. Guangdong anti corruption ordinance. Increase Japanese export support. Decreases corruption by 5%. Our stance towards corruption involves the culture of corruption. Corrupt. Decreases Japanese expat support. So we might as well get our own seats, maybe? You know? We need that political power, so... We need three seats in total. We're not in session, though, so let's, let's give it a little bit more time. I don't want to preemptively do anything here yet. So... The right people in the right places. As much as we might be tempted to uproot the entire structure of Guangdong's corrupt bureaucracy to start anew, we need neither have the resources nor the time to waste on such an all-encompassing and disruptive endeavor. Think we don't need to. If a fish rots from the head down, then the first step to rectifying this is to replace the head, retiring known corrupt officials with loyalists from Fujitsu headquarters. Even if we can access the counts of corruption overnight, we can ensure that under our direction, the government will no longer take part in it, renewing Guangdong's institutions from the top down. We shall see y'all. Oh, did I do this one? Yeah, I need to do it. eyes everywhere too. There you go. You know what? Well, I guess we can start with one, maybe. Let me start working on this stuff, too. So, we have only a mutually beneficial arrangement. It looks like all those mouths, months of Cantonese lessons were finally about to pay off. Uh, Kanamori's new friends in the 14K had a shipment of weapons coming in, the big one. A shipment so big that back in Japan, or any civilized nation for that matter, it could be considered tantamount to directing an illuminated sign saying, Hi, we're a criminal syndicate. We do crimes, come arrest us. Of course, Guangdong was a nation full of illuminated signs and practically empty of competent law enforcement. Presumably. That was why the GPF had come crawling to the Yakuza for help. For Riona's boss, this was an excellent opportunity to plant further roots in Guangdong's inner world and suck up some nutrients from the triad comp compost. For Kanemori, it was a primarily source of stress. He had a lot of those. The regular kind of underworld violence, keeping the ridiculous story about being a Chinese war orphan raised by abusive Japanese parents, which explains his atrocious accent straight, not letting any leaked information getting traced back to him. And now, just as he was finally exfiltrating, he had figured out a way to make sure his brothers got a decent share of the guns without getting caught by the triads. When the pigs and spooks showed up, and fought over themselves, of course, he had better be getting a promotion for this. He'll likely make it through just fine, of course, for now. He'd seen the triads gut people like a fish, but they are predictable. It was his family's new partner that, partners that unnerved him. Kanemori could himself be considered a double-crosser by some, and the life of a Yakuza was one where constant betrayal was rife, but at least he had abiding loyalties. Ibuka Masaru, however, right now, they were in a mutually beneficial arrangement, and as soon as that ended, though, Yakuza and Triad, Japanese and Chinese, they'd all be sleeping with the fishes, neither honor nor humanity. Don't panic. Calm your stupid tits, Mori. The accusations are baseless, and you know it. I know, but the papers sure don't. As far as the media is concerned, we're throwing half the ministry budget on cocaine and solid gold toilets. That sounds like fun! Yeah, and last week they were all saying alien spacecraft were set in Macau. You think the higher-ups are going to believe it? For heaven's sake, it's a stupid treasury pointing the finger, and they're practically running themselves from prison now. That won't matter if the papers kick up enough of a stink. If the people get mad enough, it'll be more convenient to just send all of us down the river. What kind of bellies do you think we live in? Koshi was never given a crap about what the people think. And they can barely understand their own stupid language. The only people we're dealing with will be, the, will be able to tell how obviously fraudulent these claims are. I don't see how you can be so flippant in a town like this. In case you haven't noticed, the government's pretty effing trigger-happy at the moment. And you're overreacting. It was worse when Yasuda went under. We survived that. Now we've just remained calm. Police open up. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Crapola. So where are we at? Because we're in a little corruption anyways. You know what? Um, I don't want to just do it early yet. <coughs> right people in the right places. Yeah. Hey, advancement data storage. Nice. Political power game? Not enough. <laughs> yeah, 2.47 is just never enough, right? That's right. That's absolutely right. Well, what are we doing? Okay, 20%. Not bad. Oh, look at that. Oh, as we're doing the land auction. 
It's not even 1970 yet. Not bad. Pretty good. Hey, less than nine now. Or about nine ish. We're dominant. I love it. Hey, it's 27%. Look at that. That's not bad. Got to 85%, huh? 1955. If you're wondering about that, please go right ahead. More police. One, two, three, four gives one percent more police control, which is very good for us. Won't get fooled again. The lad walked down the street, doing the motions of looking for suspicious activity, but if there was any, no feedback, entered his conscious mind. I spent a lot of time on the beat lately with his own volition. The night air seemed <clears throat> might have been thick with smog, blinding light and muffled cursing, but at the very least, no more directed at him. Far better than the closed space of a police car with another officer. A lot of people hadn't been happy ever since the almost riot. The fact that it had been almost a riot was the likely reason Helheim hadn't been demoted. It didn't stop the constant sneering and snide commentary, however. Um, Japanese officers now made sure to administer their beatings quickly and quietly in Adelie's cells, a quick slam when they were being shoved into the car doors. When Lam was present, they appeared to be taking great joy in staring at him as they did it, seeking some form of challenge. Lam hadn't responded, it just wasn't worth it. Now that there had been any recent improvements, of course, Lamb couldn't say nothing had changed since the ordinance passed. The camp by didn't barge into precincts anymore and settled with drowning them in letters and phone calls expressing their security concerns. New computers and machines entered the precinct, allowing them to decide more quickly and efficiently which poverty-stricken heck holes needed their doors kicked down, of course. A different key, but the same old song. It was all pointless. He stopped one riot, but it wouldn't be, he wouldn't be there for them all, of course. Calling into this public service would be a sick joke. Better to just treat it as a job like any other. Clock in, keep your head down, get paid. He passed the magazine stand and noticed they were selling the magazines that Yasu Yasukawa woman had worked for. A big old glossy cover article discussed the newfound unity and efficiency of Guangdong's uh, two security forces, and Lam had to stop all laugh. Oh boy. Well, we lose that amount of support, so which kind of sucks. So after this, and then we'll try to vote for it, and then, yeah. The Guangdong Anti Corruption Ordinance isn't enough to root out corruption within the civil service. They're simply tools of the corruption. Uh, pawns of someone else's design and machinations, of course. <coughs> The loyalties are bought. The crucial question is who the buyer is. The companies and their students in the Legislative Council fancy themselves the true masters of the state, using their wealth to advance their interests. We know better, this better than anyone else. To stop corruption, we must surveil those corrupting the government at any and all times. And if we can keep an eye on our enemies in the process, so be it. We'll command the Legislative Council's respect or fear, but they will not subvert our will any longer. Voting in the Legislative Council will focus is selected. Well, you know what? Jung Kong, Sony, Matsushita. Boop. Now we need one more, right? Yep. Boop. And now we're at 9%. Uh, still a lot of political power to use for just one. Because something tells me we'll probably get more corruption eventually, anyways. Almost 50 billion? That ain't enough. Nice. Beautiful. So where are we at? 99%, almost 28%. We're still a deficit, which sucks. 50 billion is not enough. Not enough, my sir. Oh, went down by two. That's that's pretty good. That's that was solidly worth it. Oh, we can set up cameras. Oh, we should have waited for that one. Oh no, and a terrorist attack in Italia. Too bad we're not editing. We got bigger issues to deal with too, anyway. So, give me a little more corruption first, please. Oh, we're gonna lose three percent, anyways. Do we pass at least uh, forty-eight point nine billion? Maybe, maybe not. Hopefully, we did. Restructuring. It probably wasn't normal to like your bosses, but Taka Taka Takashi did all the same. He'd been somewhat apprehensive when he was transferred from Osaka to a corporate ex exclave in southern China, but his fears were quickly laid aside. The Guangdong Ministry of Transport turned out to be fairly lax, yet effective working environment. Oh. 
The thought his efforts were appreciated and rewarded by management. In his mediocre English, he had managed to provide enough rough translations of what proved to be some critical information on the old Hong Kong subway tunnels that he had a promotion might be forthcoming one day, however. His old boss would apparently transfer to another department. Where they had been warm and friendly, they were now cold and distant. Orders more strenuous than above were delivered tersely and expected to be fulfilled without excuse or delay. A round of layoffs soon followed their arrival, accompanied by a creeping growth and the number of private consultants, especially from Fujitsu. The supposed experts did not understand how to run a public service, let alone public transportation. The directives were to be followed anyway. The promotion was not forthcoming. Takashi resolved to get transferred to somewhere where the public sector wasn't considered a joke as soon as possible. They have railways in Manchukuo, right? Self-regulation. Morito well, was really going to read the entire thing, wasn't he? As well as could barely get any more accus- accusatory after only a few pages in. If you got to fight back the urge to snap at Morita that he'd already read the darn thing and knew, and knew everything in it. On and on he went, stopping for emphasis at the proposal of an anti-corruption supervisory committee and the plan to add a network of cameras and audio recording equipment to the legislative complex. Or council complex. Finally, as he read the last few words, he ended his little stage production by hurling the paper theoretically down on the table and glowering at Ibuka. This he snapped, stabbing his fingers at the pages. It's executive overreach. It's just tyranny. You're lucky I have you made this an ordinance to be voted on, Ibuka fired back, his tone verging on venomous. Extinguishing corruption should be non-negotiable. At this point, Matsu should cut in. There's no, there needs to be some autonomy for the op corporations. It'd be bad for business for Fujitsu to be to lo- seen to lord over, over our businesses. We need to have some leeway in reporting to the supervisory committee. Make whatever amendments you like, Marita replied, shrugging. But Ibuka, you'll never get my boat, you slimy effing toad. Pedal your BS elsewhere. I'll put up with enough of your nonsense. This stuff here, find you get your way. Self regulation. Outsources surveillance devices to other corporations. 50. So. Yeah. Well, as long as nothing bad happens, we'll have it, but. You never know. You really just never know. I'll get more approval soon anyways, too. So, corruption? Not bad. Looking pretty good. The devil you know. Out of that little display, Marita was up and out of the room in seconds. Lee trailing him like an obedient puppy. Matsushita wasn't far behind. He'd never been one for confrontation. Ibuka sighed and was just about to leave the room himself when Komai tapped him on the shoulder. Yes, Ibuka snapped, not exactly relishing the prospect of another pointless fight. Give the Kempai a security attachment to the supervisory committee, Kempai said, ignoring Ibuka's outburst entirely, or security too, if you like. They'll want these information you get from the bugs, and I'm sure they'll pay handsomely for the privilege. That would be naked overreach, Ibuka replied, frowning. So, you're overreaching as well. What does it matter? I'm here in Guangdong to act as the counterweight to Morita and his babbling idiots, yes? Here's your counterweight. An easy way to co opt the IJ to push everyone out, else out of your way? Why are you even playing it nice? Isn't this exactly what you wanted? For a moment, Ibuka was lost for words, only on the one hand. This felt like a decision that could not be stepped back from, but on the other hand, Kamai did have a point. Just go. Out. He went without saying another word. Secretly, unless Kampatai personnel and Manchurian private security contractors that surveil the Leko. Just go. Not bad. 8% growth is not good enough, though, but whatever. Because how many seats do we have? We have 49 seats. That's pretty good. Legislative history, huh? We, we've elect, uh, elected, we've enacted a lot. <coughs> Ears everywhere. A great victory has been accomplished as Guangdong's government, which has long been undermined by the influence of our inferior rivals, has been forcefully brought, brought to heel. It was imperative that every vital institution was secured from the constant threat of impo- impotence. Now that our officials have made their presence known that this threat has been crushed, much to the betterment of Guangdong, the old fellows uh, ceased and a government fit for the future will rise. There is nowhere our opponents cannot be heard. We are listening. We hear all, my friends. Oh, we get more police control. Somehow they were still howling like monkeys. The representative after representative stood up and gave some sort of speech after another by the violation of their supposed rights, of course. Uh, or accusing Ibuka of a blatant power grabbing, a violation of the principle of joint rule between the companies, supposedly. Ibuka usually had little patience for sophists, particularly those barely concealing their own corruption. However, he felt like it might be better for them to get it out in the system while well, they still could. Ibuka and Fujitsu's men made uh, occasional speeches in favor of the ordinance, but for the most part were content to let their opponents scream their little guts out. This, after all, was not the sort of vote won on the Leko floor, if, in, in fact, anywhere. Self-interest was a powerful thing, especially for the corrupt, however. It could also make the more redeemable, honorable members sufficiently amendable to change. When the votes came, they bowed their heads solemnly and did the right thing, perhaps for the first time in their lives. The sophists, meanwhile, did not take their loss with grace and dignity, no matter. Honorable gentlemen, he book announced over the booze and jeers, thanks to your cooperation. We'll be entering a new era of honesty and transparency, ensuring our government will inspire confidence in the years to come. And to those of you leaving us today, we thank you for your faithful service, and we hope you'll enjoy a pleasant retirement. Ibuka pressed a button on his desk. Not long after, police stormed into the Leko chamber, dragging screaming representatives away. All about as one before they are fought. Beautiful. Oops. 
Oops, there's my console commands, but I haven't used any yet in this episode. But you never know if we have to use them. 1978. Uh, railway guns, sure, because we need railway guns in Guangdong. Good. Zero percent. Beautiful. So we have corruption corrupt. <coughs> what is to be done, my friends, in the wake of the anti corruption bill? Or ordinances passing, an emergency boardroom meeting has been called. It has been very quickly evolved from a productive discussion to executives simply voicing their individual grievances against the government and each other. The couple of bleeding hearts lamented further, diminishing of any kind of popular representation, while most were simply outraged that Fujitsu got yet another leg up over them. How could this could have happened? Did it matter how it happened? The leg goes off limits now. Why wasn't this prevented? What could they have done about it? If his firm, this firm was adequately managed, would they be even in this mess? What right did some lowly Osaka-educated Cretan have to talk to them like that? Ascension simmered. The men stood at the edge of throwing fists at each other. One figure stepped back and remained silent. The others had failed, undoubtedly, and the world was on the verge of moving past them. A tragedy for them, certainly, but an opportunity for others. None of his colleagues could exactly be called honest businessmen, and perhaps where the crop would be punished, others would be rewarded. The man stepped back and smiled. He had to make some calls tomorrow. And so we're back down here. But the Pantopica, Pantopticon... Under the guidance of much of Ibuka, Guangdong had been utterly transformed from an immobile and antiquated and inefficient disappointment to a prestigious paradigm of prosperity and progress. The forceful yet necessary hand of security in order to successfully coerce and put every man, woman, and child in Guangdong into the vision and path Ibuka had outlined for them, prevailing against the decrepit forces of chaos and disorder. You found harmony and concord had been befallen the streets of the Three Pearls, no matter which position you possess or occupation you specialize in. Every person who operates as intended for the benefit and innovation of the nation. Adherence to Ibuka's vision had brought the populace of Guangdong into a new era of joy and prosperity. May they revel in the freedom and release we have granted them, and nobody shall dare to do evil. Following to Panopticon, Guangdong, Japanese sofa will be updated to the state of surveillance. Hey, I can make a review if you want to this, please go ahead and get back to work. Three more seats, more Japanese expat support, more Zujin support. China's opinion goes up with us, which we do really need. Um, yeah. Seven, tiny bit of corruption, not bad. We're getting closer. Eyes, ears everywhere. The water cooler. The civil service was over, always terribly underfunded, but it was a place with a real sense of camaraderie. Adversity had a habit of bringing the people together. And then Gordo was proud to work with the people he did. They managed to do a lot with what they had, and at the very least, they, he hoped they were making Koshu a better city to live in. Recently, they even taken on some Zuzhin workers, who are quickly making some very good ideas on how to improve services for Chinese citizens. Gordo recently bought some materials for learning Cantonese. They learned his language so he could learn theirs. Doubtlessly, it would be useful for his job, and slowly, as the days went by, less and less of Gordo's colleagues filled the office. Now, new people came in. Along with new managers from Fujitsu, they had directors and instructions, they were to be obeyed, work was to be done promptly to the letter, and without an inefficient action. Workers were required to stay in particular areas for their whole shifts, to walk along designated paths on the floor to go from one space to another, and most groups, ta task groups were done through conference calls between cubicles. Failure to meet these directives resulted in termination of employment, and employees were incentivized to report the failures of others. Failure was something rather loosely defined, of course, most of the Zuzhin did not last long, and so Goro woke up early every morning. Catching an early train to minimize any chance of being late, he performed his work promptly and efficiently, without complaint or deviation. When there was no task to perform, he sat straight up with his shoulders back, to cultivate a professional image. He left work late in order to show sufficient dedication to his task. He went home, ate, slept, then started the whole thing over again. His Cantonese materials gathered dust in the corner. A service streamlined, but we're going to end it there and finish off this part of the focus tree for Ibuka and Fujitsu in the next episode. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as I see what else we can do with the city of Guangdong and a visionary. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.